our next segment on homeowners insurance is top three things to know about homeowners insurance. I'm Gordon Ito, the insurance commissioner at the State Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs. In this segment, you will learn about the importance of homeowners insurance. Our experts will be covering three topics to help you understand what's needed to protect your home. You'll learn about the various types of insurance policies, what ratings mean, and how to file a claim in the event of a disaster. To adequately protect your home and belongings under homeowner's insurance, uh, there are several different types of forms or policies that's available. One of them is the basic form that covers um, some basic name perils like fire, wind, smoke, and it covers the dwelling and your personal property. The broad form covers uh, plumb unexpected rupture of plumbing, um, falling trees, falling objects, things like that. The special form covers all perils unless they're specifically excluded, something like earthquake. Then there's the tenant or renter's form that only covers personal property and uh, it covers the perils that are in the broad form, just some basic name perils. Then there's the condo owner's form um, that's specifically for owner-occupied uh, condo units and that also only covers personal property including the walls, ceiling, floors of the unit and those per the perils it covers are also under the broad form. If you live in a flood zone and you have a mortgage, more than likely the lender will ask you to purchase flood insurance. Um, if you need flood insurance, then you would normally go to the National Flood Insurance Program, which is a federal program that's administered through FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Uh, for Hawaii, the state coordinating agency for NFIP is DLNR, Department of Land and Natural Resources. So if you're curious as to where the flood zones are, you can go to the DLNR website and they have a flood, flood assessment flood hazard assessment tool that you can look up and find the different flood zones on the different islands. When looking at hurricane coverage, um, you really need to look at the policy, both your homeowners and hurricane policy. Uh, sometimes the hurricane coverage is included in the homeowner's policy, sometimes it's not. It's added as an endorsement or an add-on to the policy. Um, in many cases, what we usually see is hurricane coverage covers windstorm damage uh, when a storm or tropical cyclone uh, is defined by the Central Pacific Hurricane Center. Really, in, in terms of looking at earthquake coverage, you really want to be kind of determining whether or not you live in an area that maybe has a little bit more seismic activity than other areas. For instance, maybe someone living on a big island near a volcano where there's a little bit more seismic activity, they may want to look into earthquake coverage. The starting process um, of trying to develop a final rate uh, for your policy um, entails um, starting with the base premium, which is what um, a typical price of a, a normal insured within your pool. And then it's adjusted by various um, risk characteristics, by the amount of coverage you select, by the deductible levels you select, and also um, by the insurer's selected expense uh, ratios and um, desired profit. And so um, generally, the more coverage that is offered to you, the more premium that you can expect to pay for it. The year your house was built may or may not affect your premiums. Uh, it depends whether or not your insurance company has determined that to be a risk classification. Uh, generally, for the insurance companies that do use that as a risk class, um, the newer houses, uh, the newer your house, the larger your premium credit, the older your house, uh, the, more, the more you are surcharged. And I think this is just based on the general um, idea that newer houses must comply with current building code, electrical code, and so forth. So they might be better risk. Uh, this isn't always the case when we review the rating plans. Uh, as we mentioned, that ensure the, the factors and relativities associated with these type of risk classifications are based on uh, loss data. And sometimes the loss data doesn't correlate to their 
assumptions that they use to generate these type of um, um, risk classifications. And so while it may seem logical that newer houses uh, should have a discount, um, we found that some insurers um, from their loss experience, the older homes um, had, had much better loss experience. And so they were forced to remove that rating provision from their rating plans. The location of your house does affect the cost of your insurance. Um, and this is primarily due to a risk classification that was developed by um, the Insurance Services Office and administered by the Hawaii Insurance Bureau. Uh, all, all insurers um, licensed in Hawaii use this risk classification to, um, I guess, assess the public protection capabilities of specific areas. And so, um, and this is actually called um, a public protection classification. And so the public protection classification um, focuses on a few, few types of, um, a few considerations. Um, one, of the, one of these being the distance your house is to the fire station, the distance your house is to um, a particular fire hydrant on your street, the water pressure is available at that hydrant, um, the equipment and training of the nearest fire station, and also um, the effectiveness of the communications, uh, the emergency communications, which is 911 calls. You know, how fast are uh, firefighters able to react and get to your property, basically. And so um, ISO develops uh, rating factors associated with these various considerations and um, each community is assigned a grade of 1 to 10, um, 1 being uh, the best and 10 being the worst. And so um, each community with, uh, within each of the various islands has its own public protection classification. Uh, Oahu is primarily a 3 with a few areas on here that are 10 and for neighbor islands um, it ranges from 4 to 10 depending on where you are. And, um, so 10, uh, a risk of 10 um, would mean that there is no protection available at that site, meaning it's outside of five miles, there is no hydrant, and um, so there is no public fire protection, essentially. Well, claims process is usually instigated by the homeowner themselves. So if something's happened at your home, you're gonna call the insurance company, let them know what the incident was. Um, the first step would be to make sure you're, you and your family are safe. Um, the second thing would be to mitigate the damage, you know, keep further damage from happening. If you have a big hole in your roof and they'll tarp over it, your pipe's broken, make sure you get the water shut off, those types of things. Once you have all that, you're home secure and uh, you report the claim to your insurance company, you want to start documenting what's, what's been damaged and, um, and then working with the insurance adjuster the home insurer is assigned to come up with what the value of the claim is, what types of things were damaged, what's going to take to put the house back in order. Um, you want to get your contractor, whoever's going to be doing the repairs, the remediation work involved right away so you can ideally have them work with you and the adjuster so everybody's seeing eye to eye on the process. So the, the first thing would be reporting the claim, then uh, you know keeping further damage from happening, then just documenting what's happened. A police, you had a theft, a police report's very helpful in documenting what happened. If there was a fire, the fire department came out, they took some uh, information down. All that's very helpful in the claim. Um, and then the third thing would be just settling the claim. What's the values? The gesture cuts you a check, you go out, get the work done, taken care of, replace the items that were damaged. Um, a lot of policies are replacement costs these days, meaning that they're going to pay you for what it takes to actually buy the new television or re, you know, redo the counters in the kitchen after a fire. And so they'll pay you the depreciated amount first, you go out, get the repairs done, or buy the items, and they'll pay you the difference. So. So you, sometimes people think, hey, I think I'm getting shortchanged here. You know, work with the adjuster, see what type of policy you have. If it is a replacement cost policy, you're going to be getting a supplemental check later. So, yeah, a couple of things to expedite the claims process. Some tips for that would be, uh, beginning in the beginning, if you have good documentation to start with, that's very helpful. If you've already done an inventory on your home, or at the very least, you've walked through the home. It's not really much of an excuse these days because everybody has a phone that you can take pictures with, or even videotape each room as you walk through it. Keep that safe somewhere safe. That helps jog your memory when you're filling out proof of loss forms or documenting what was damaged. You can go back to those pictures and see what you had hanging on the wall, what was, you know, what was maybe in these cupboards, that type of thing. Um, the other thing is to have a, just a, you know, 
it's a stressful time. It's not the f funnest uh, situation to be in after a fire or a major theft. Um, you just want to keep in mind that the adjuster's there to help. The insurance company's job is to put you back where you were. So have a cooperative attitude. Try and work with the adjuster, uh, work with the contractor or whoever's doing the uh, remediation work. Um, keep everybody on the same page. If you can be timely, that's very helpful. And a lot of insurance policies have clauses in them that require you to report things timely, to move the claim forward, to cooperate in the, you know, in the adjusting of the claim. So make sure you're, you're helpful those, in those ways. If you had your claim denied, or maybe a portion of your claim denied, or maybe you're not getting the, the dollar amount that you think the claim's worth, and there are several options available to you. Um, you generally, if it's just a, a, value, a matter of values, or maybe the scope of the work, there's an, all policies usually have an appraisal clause that you or the insurance company can invoke, and that just gets you choose some time appraiser, they choose an appraiser, there's an umpire that's chosen, and they'll come up with, with a solution to what, what the value of the claim is or what needs to be done, what the scope of the work should be. If there's an issue in the policy about coverage, was this something that the policy covers or not, that's a little stronger, you have, and it's a contract, there's a dispute there, you're going to have to probably go into court to get that resolved. Um, the other thing you can do is involve a third party early on in the process. There's public adjusters out there that would step in, basically take your place, work with the insurance company for a percent of the claim. You could hire an attorney maybe to help you with this type of thing if you're, if you're concerned or you're worried that maybe you're not uh, getting what you need out of the claim. Uh, the other thing, if you're just not comfortable or you have questions, you're always welcome to call the insurance division. Uh, there's people there have been in the business for many, many years. They regulate the business. They're, they're, they're happy to help answer questions that you have and let you know what direction uh, you, know, you can go with your, with your claim or with your inquiry. Thank you for joining us. Today you learned why it's important to have homeowner's insurance and the type of insurance policy needed to protect your home. For more information, visit our website, cca.hawaii.gov ins or call the insurance division for more information.